Hey everyone, it's Scott and Katie from Older and Wiser. And today we're doing a video um, about diamond hunting in Arkansas, specifically Crater of Diamond State Park. And this is the kind of video we wish we would have had before we went. Think of it as a quick start guide. There's a ton of information out there, but um, it's really focused, a lot of it. And, and there's a lot of it spread out. What we're trying to do today is bring a lot of that and condense it into one little video. So if this is the only thing you watch before you go, you at least have a better idea than we did yeah. going down. So we're gonna include a little information about the park, a little bit about the equipment that you'll need, a little bit about what to do and what to expect when you're out there, and also when you get home, because you're gonna bring some of it home, mm -hmm. most likely. Hopefully. So anyway, if that's interesting to you, if you're getting ready to go down or even thinking about going down to Crater Diamond State Park, this is the video for you. Stay tuned. Okay, so you've decided to go down to Crater of Diamonds State Park. The very first thing that you need to do is join the Facebook group. Um, I don't care if you're going down in, in a month or a year or, or however long, join the Facebook group. There are, um, it's September 2019 right now, there are about 10,000 members today. And um, a lot of those members are gonna be newer, looking for information, but there's also a lot of very experienced diamond hunters down there, park regulars, and people that are constantly posting and giving out all sorts of great information. The Facebook group is the best place to get up-to-date information on the park, where to find diamonds, where they're, you know, uh, what areas of the park are, are good locations, um, current weather conditions, recommendations for where to stay, um, places to eat, and things to do in the area. So it, it's great. There's a lot of people that are local. There are a lot of people that travel there um, frequently. So join the Facebook group, get involved. It's amazing. The other thing I'll recommend you do is look at a couple YouTube channels um, or even an, an eDVD that are available out there. Right now I'm gonna mention two YouTube channels that I really like, um, and that's Diamond Miner Ivans, and then the Arkansas Diamond Miner. Um, I'll add more channels as I get them, and I'll put them all in the link below. So the Facebook group link, the link to any YouTube channels will be below. There's also an eDVD by a gentleman named Glenn Worthington. He is um, very involved in the park down there, um, very involved in the Facebook group as well. Very helpful gentleman. Um, I'll put the link to his website down below as well. The thing that you're gonna find by joining that Facebook group is that it is a community, a real community of people that have pulled together with this common interest, and they're all so super helpful. Um, you're going to see a lot of posts from people um, like us, new people, people that have been down there asking questions, what do I expect, um, posting pictures of their finds, is this a diamond, is this Jasper, is this something else, um, that's very informative. And a lot of the park regulars will occasionally post um, lots of pictures of their diamond finds and they'll give you tips and tricks on how to identify a diamond. So let's talk about the park itself. There are lots of places to stay around town um, if you need that. The park has a campground, which is fantastic. Uh, we did a little video that showcased the town and the park a little bit. I'll put that link up above and down below so you can check that out if you want to. There are lots of hotels, lodges, other campsites around, plenty of places to eat, plenty of things to do. Um, real quick, Kate will be mad at me if I don't plug um, Hawkins Variety Store. A uh, great place to get sandwiches and desserts and just other other little things. They've been around forever. Um, a really good local place right there in, in the square as you come into Murfreesboro. At the park itself, you'll walk into the visitor center and they'll have a gift shop on one side and then on the other side, you get um, a little museum and some displays on, on the history of the park, which is great. You can also rent your equipment there. Um, I'll talk a little bit later in the video about what equipment you'll need, um, but by all accounts, the equipment that they rent is pretty good. Uh, some people don't like the wagons, but uh, if you don't have one, you don't really have another, another choice unless you're gonna be hauling buckets around. Um, equipment prices are pretty reasonable. Admission is pretty reasonable. Uh, right now, uh, I would check the park website for all the latest prices, but right now admission is $10 for adults, 
Um, that's anyone 12 and over. Six to 12 is $6, and um, kids six and under are free, or under six are free, and that's for a day. Now, uh, when we went down there, they had this deal where if you went and you bought your admission the last hour of the day, then it was good for the entire next day as well. So let's talk about what to expect when you get out to the field. You walk through the doors at the visitor center, you go down a ramp, and then there's a little lower area there that's got the equipment rentals and um, some examples of diamonds. They even do a few tutorials um, throughout the day and they'll let you know when those are. There's also the desk down there with the park employees that will help you identify some of the gems. And I'll tell you now, uh, we, and we don't mean to disparage anyone, but um, they're not certified gemologists. They do go through some training from what we understand. Um, they're very helpful, they're very knowledgeable, but they, they've been known to make some mistakes. So don't leave anything at the park. Um, they have a little bucket there. You can find glass at the park. They have a little bucket there that you can dump your glass in. Don't, because sometimes it may actually be a diamond. <laughs> um, at least take it all home and check it out yourself first. Post it on the Facebook group, um, take it to a local gemologist, whatever. Just make sure that you're keeping everything, just in case. Um, so when you get out there, you'll walk down the, the path and um, there'll be the wash station to the left. That's kind of your cleanup station for when you're done, uh, if it's muddy out there. And then there'll be, it's kind of separated into a few different sections and it's, they're dirt paths um, and it's a, it's a rough terrain. So there are furrows there that they, they dig up or you know, when they plow the field. So it's pretty rough terrain. You're gonna want sturdy shoes. Um, there's not a lot of shade. So um, a good sun hat, sunscreen, um, and uh, any kind of, you know, if you have a little portable umbrella or, or something like that, that would be good for you too. Uh, we actually recommend going out in the morning, digging up your dirt, and then bringing it in in the afternoon during the heat of the day to the wash stations because um, those are covered and you've got the water there. And, and if there's any breeze at all, it, it feels okay. As far as the equipment you'll need, um, you'll definitely want some buckets. Uh, they rent three gallon buckets at the park. You can also find these five gallon buckets at a lot of your um, like Walmarts or, or uh, home improvement stores. We got ours from Lowe's. And um, we got two with lids just so that when we brought stuff home, we could um, you know, keep them sealed up. And then, um, I would say you wouldn't need too many. We went down with about 10 buckets, um, kind of overkill. Uh, you'll want, you know, two or three buckets maybe to fill with dirt and then um, at least one bucket to carry your, your anything that you're coming home with. And um, much more than that, I think you'll just find you won't use it just because you're probably not going to fill six buckets of dirt and then take it to the wash station. Um, I already mentioned you're going to want sturdy shoes, sun protection, things like that. Uh, the other thing that you're going to want is some gloves. Um, we picked up these gloves at uh, one of the gardening stores. They worked out pretty good for us. They're, they've got a thick um, rubber and it's texturized. Um, so these are, are waterproof except for the top, but these, these do dry pretty quickly. Um, but when you're when you're digging in there there's a lot of rocks and sharp things like i said there's glass too so you you definitely want to protect your hands um make sure you have gloves even when you're using your shovel right i mean gloves help protect your hands so make sure you have a good pair of gloves with you too speaking of shovels uh, we found these little foldable shovels um have been great i think they are about 12 or 15 bucks on amazon this one came with a pouch and um, see, it folds up nice and compact. It's got a serrated edge. Pull it apart. Ah. There. And it's just a little hand shovel. Uh, this is perfect for digging what, what you want to dig out of the park and then folding back up when you're ready to go home. Plus, uh, now we can use it around the, the house. You'll most likely want a wagon of some sorts. Uh, they do rent them at the park. Um, they're not the best from what we've heard. We didn't actually rent one, we brought our own. Um, and we used uh, Malcolm's little radio flyer, uh, foldable wagon. 
and that worked out okay. It has the, the good kind of off-road chunky tires for the terrain, um, but it has soft sides. So we had stuff kind of falling out when it would start to lean a little bit. Um, whatever you bring down, make sure it's got the bigger, thicker, rubber, chunky tires because it is, there, there's really nothing paved once you're out there in the field and you're going over some pretty rough terrain. So the little plastic wheels on a kid's wagon, they're just not gonna cut it. You're just pretty much gonna be pulling that thing along rather than, or you know, kind of dragging it through the dirt rather than having it follow you on, on wheels. Um, some people use wheelbarrows and that's fine too if you have a good wheelbarrow you want to bring down. Um, a lot of people recommend the gorilla carts. We have a gorilla cart here at home. Those are great but we just didn't have the room to bring it with us. Uh, these little kneeling pads are great uh, especially if it's dry out there at the park. The, the conditions get really um, tough. The, the ground is hard and rocky so these little foam kneelers that you can pick up at the garden stores for a couple bucks are definitely worthwhile. And then really the most important thing or one of the most important things you're going to need are screens. Um, we purchased this nine set of, of Sarukas on Amazon. I think it was about 80 or $90. And um, we did so because we're going to be doing this a lot. Not only the diamond mining down in Arkansas, but we're going to go search for gems across the U.S. And um, we figured we might as well go ahead and buy our own set so that we didn't have to keep renting them from different places. By all accounts, the ones at the park are good. You can rent them there. Uh, check the website for, for prices. There's also a local seller down there. On your way down to the park, you'll see his homemade sign. It'll say diamond screens for sale. Um, a lot of people in the Facebook group say that they bought from him and they're very good quality and a reasonable price. The stores in town also sell the different screens and stuff. Now, there's three main methods that you're going to use for searching for diamonds down there. Um, there's going to be surface searching, dry sifting, and then wet sifting. I will tell you, we spent most of our time dry sifting, and we regretted it. We felt like we wasted the first day and a half doing it. Um, it was fun, it was interesting to do, and I think it's something that, you know, uh, it's, it's neat if you want to just get that experience or kind of keep the kids busy with something. Uh, basically what, what dry sifting is, is you'll stack your, your Sarukas or your screens on top of a bucket. Uh, these screens actually fit on top of the five and three gallon buckets, which is another great feature about them. Um, but you'll have them in, you know, in, in descending order for, so you'll have uh, the bigger screen and then they'll gradually get lower. You dump your dirt in the top and you shake it and things will fall through and then you check the different pans to see what you've got. Um, so it's fun, but really kind of slow and cumbersome. And then you don't really clean the stuff off and you don't really get a good glimpse of what you're, what you're looking for. It's harder to, to spot the diamonds. And the second way is surface searching. That's a great way to spend a little time. Like I said, um, you can get out there for the last hour um, of the day. If you buy your ticket and then you have the whole other day for um, the same ticket, and you can do some surface searching. There have been a lot of significant diamond finds through surface searches. Um, so don't discount that. And basically what surface searching is, is you, you walk along and um, look down at the surface, look for things that look different, look for things that are shining or glinting in the sun, um, you know, poke around. But you're not really digging dirt, you're not really processing, you're just kind of seeing what's, what's laying out there. Um, so that's definitely a way to go. Uh, but the wet sifting is what seems to be the most productive way and the way most of the regulars find their diamonds. So diamonds are, are heavier and they'll fall towards the bottom wherever they are. So if they're coming down the field and they're getting washed away by water from a good rain or whatever, um, they'll follow the, the furrows and then, you know, maybe as, as the water takes a bend or goes down a hill, they'll kind of settle in a certain place. And you'll see in those furrows that there are places where they're caved in. And that's where you, you really want to focus on, from what we were told. And what you're really looking for is gravel. Um, the diamonds will settle down into the gravel, so you're not looking for big chunks of dirt or anything like that. Um, you really want that gravel. And that's what you'll collect into your buckets. So go out, find your gravel, um, check the Facebook group for the, the places. Right now the East Drain is one of the better places to be looking. Uh, but that could change. So definitely check the Facebook group for that. Anyway, you want to grab your gravel, um, put it in your buckets, take it up to the wash station, and then do a, a, a wet sift. And um, 
Once you're done with that wet sifting, you'll have what they call a center. And that center is all the heavier stuff um, that has collected, which will be like your diamond and any other interesting gems. And you can poke through that while you're there, but scoop it up, put it in your bucket and take it home. And you'll be able to go through it later. So that was how we spent the last half of our last day and we got so much great stuff. Uh, we still haven't found a diamond. We're still going through some of our centers though, so we holding out hope. But um, we did find some very interesting things, including what we think is a petrified bug head. Uh, so that was a, a, a weird thing. Uh, Katie thought it was an alien. So we actually did a little tutorial on how to properly wet sift and find your centers while we were down there at the wash station. We were fortunate enough to meet one of the regulars and his son and um, they were kind enough to give us a tutorial. So we took that knowledge and, and recorded it and we'll share that here with you. We'll check it out. You basically you want two screens. One's got a bigger, um, bigger screen and the other one's smaller. So you'll stack them. Uh -huh. All right. Take some of your dug dirt. Shake it out a little bit, and then you're just gonna wet set this. Basically, you want to wash all the dirt off, let the smaller stuff fall through. It's back to the water. All right. I mean, you definitely want to look through it. There's. Yeah, I've been taking out big chunks of quartz. Yeah, you're gonna find big chunks of quartz and other stuff here. So yeah, throw that over there. We'll keep that. Alright, all right, so you just kind of toss that here to the side. Uh huh. And then, careful. And then this is where the the real stuff comes in. Um, so you wanna do the sifting thing where you wanna get some of this dirt off, right? Mm -hmm. And then, so the thing is, because the diamonds and the fun stuff are heavier, you want to get them to fall to the center. So you do a rock and forth until you make kind of a loaf. Yes. And then tap underneath and rotate it. Make another loaf. Rotate. Make another loaf. And they said to do that about five or six times. Uh huh. And then tap underneath. Drain it all out. And if you did it right, you have what they call the pie. So you flip it over, and you always flip it towards you to keep it from spreading, I guess. And then in the center of your pie that you flipped should be all the good stuff. And all the then, heavy stuff. Yep. And then they say to look through it, keep that center, take it home, let it dry out like on a baking sheet or something. Look through it again. Yep. We'll move this. All right, let's see if you can do it a second uh, time. Oh yeah, there's our yeah. center right there. And now here's Katie to give you an overview of what to do when you get those centers home. So what do you do when you get home from the park and you have your bucket of centers? You dry them out. The reason that you dry them out is because when everything is wet, it all looks shiny. So it all looks a little bit like a diamond. Um, we have read that putting a baking sheet with a thin layer in the oven can dry them out. I found that the fastest way to do it was to put a thin layer on the cookie sheet and then set that outside in the direct sunlight. Cleared it up in an hour, maybe two. So after that, you want to look through what you have for anything shiny. Now, I use this fantastic lit magnifying craft light. It clips anywhere. It's wonderful. We'll put a link to it um, in the description. So I've already looked through this particular center. You know, we just do pour a cup at a time out. Um, but I found some that I missed last time. So here's a piece of quartz. Now I've been saving the quartz because we didn't find any diamonds and the quartz is pretty and I'll be able to do something with it. Um, there's a lot of things that you can find at Crater of Diamonds State Park. You can find diamonds, yes, yellow, white, and brown. 
you can find calcite. Now calcite looks a lot like quartz when it's wet, but when it's dry it gets kind of chalky. Or you can find quartz, which also looks a lot like diamonds. Um, you can also find glass. Again, looks a lot like diamonds. Um, so does amethyst. <laughs> so we have found everything except diamonds. Um, in addition to the diamonds, the quartz, the amethyst, and all that, you can find jasper, you can find um, fool's gold, I've been told, also raw garnet. Now we were told that the raw garnet is magnetic if you have a rare earth magnet. You can get these on Amazon. Um, we borrowed this from a neighbor. And we did find a couple of these little tiny magnetic rocks. Now they could be garnet, sure or they could be pieces of antique square head nails, which you can also find out at the park. Um, so there's a lot of different things that you can find. I use these tweezers to retrieve rocks. Um, they say not to do that, but it made it a lot easier for me. Also handy to have is this jeweler's loop. Now this one is fantastic. It has a little carrying case so we can take it anywhere. You have a flashlight here. So that makes it super duper easy to take a look at, you know, anything that you may suspect is a diamond. Also, this one has a black light. Now we read somewhere that up to 30% of diamonds will glow blue under a black light. So obviously we haven't found any diamonds, so we haven't been able to test that theory. Um, but we'll include a link for that also below. I did want to mention when you're out in the field, take a small container that has a lid with it. That way, if you're surface hunting and you find something that you think may be a diamond, or even when you're going through your centers at the wash station, you can just quickly put it in there and then have it looked at um, before you leave the park. Always take everything home with you. Don't throw your glass away or anything like that. Um, you want to make sure that you bring it all home and look at it when it's clean and dry. All right, everyone. I hope that you enjoyed the video. I hope it was helpful. Um, Try to keep it quick but informative. Uh, you can definitely get more in-depth information from a lot of the resources that I've linked below. The Facebook group, the YouTube channels, um, the EDVD by Mr. Worthington, there's just tons of information out there. We were overwhelmed with all of it, which is why we created this video. We just wanted to give people a quick overview, right? Quick overview what to expect, and then if you want to delve deeper in for more information, there's plenty of resources out there for it. Uh, we'd appreciate it if you give the video a thumbs up if it was helpful to you. Uh, consider subscribing to our channel. We've got lots of stuff. Uh, we've got our travel vlogs. We've got a lot of how-tos like this one, um, tips and tricks and things we've learned along the way. And leave us a comment below. Let us know how we did. If, if we got something wrong, uh, let us know. We'll, we'll share that information. We'll update the video or the comments because we're not experts. We understand that. We're just trying to, to give people a, a quick overview. Um, so anyway, thanks for watching everyone and we'll see you next time.